my gratitude for, uh, for inviting me to this uh, in interesting and exciting forum uh, to uh, JEF and, uh, and PIDS. So why my presentation is largely parochial because the larger, more strategic question has been addressed by my former predecessor, uh, uh, the eminent scholars that, uh, that, that speaks uh, before me. So let me uh, speak to sort of a national level uh, responses to connectivity, the issues of peace and security that the ambassador recently mentioned in connectivity and the ASEAN framework. So what, so I have 22 slides and 10 minutes, so I'm gonna really go fast in the, in the, in the war speed. So there, these, these two, this first slide I wanna emphasize on two points. One is peace and national reconciliation is, is the first objective of national economic policy because peace is really important in, in, in Myanmar context. Second is the, the, uh, the balance growth, horizontal growth between state and region. These are the two, first two points that I wanna highlight in this uh, slide. Second slide is uh, the new government, NLD government has formulated 12-point economic policy, and among which one of them is relevant to ASEAN framework, which is the 12, 12 point of the 12-point economic policy, which is the integration, regional integration uh, ASEAN framework so identify changing business environment ASEAN and beyond and uh, uh, taking advantage of this, uh, uh, this regional integration to make, make, make Myanmar business more competitive. So, so one of the recent uh, uh, development in, in the policy framework is Myanmar investment law. So Myanmar investment law is, this, uh, is sort of, uh, a merge between uh, foreign investment law and citizenship law that sort of uh, provide a more consistent and coherent framework for all investment uh, without discrimination between foreign and uh, domestic investment. So that also allows for uh, more regional delegation of authority for uh, uh, state and regional investment commission to make decision <laughs> on uh, investment allocation. And we're also drafting Myanmar Companies Law, which is also an improvement in the sense that the definition of foreign companies uh, the percentage of foreign shares can be increasing uh, from 1% to uh, the, the last update is 35%. So this is a general overview of the economy. The, the share of the agriculture is declining over the years. The manufacturing and then services are increasing. But what do we see on the structural transformation perspective? With the growing economic growth, do we see a declining uh, share of agriculture in the labor, mar uh, labor market? Uh, we don't. There's between 2005 and 2015, there's essentially no structural uh, transformation in terms of a share of the labor force in the sector. So the agriculture uh, service and manufacturing, uh, the, the share of the labor force is still constant despite the robust economic growth. So economic growth is robust over the years. And now if you can see the green uh, line, uh, over there, uh, it's, it's still quite uh, uh, doing much better than uh, its peer uh, in, in, the, in the East Asia and Southeast Asia. Although its, it's it growth is primarily driven by exports in, in primary commodity product. So the first top one is that from 2010 and the bottom one in 2015, the essentially no, no relative change in the composition of the export and the primary, primary commodity product dominates the uh, export structure. Similarly, FDI, if you look at the FDI, FDI, FDI is predominantly, predominantly uh, concentrated in oil and gas and power. So the, the extractive industry uh, dominated the, uh, the flow of FDI in Myanmar. Uh, the in kind of macro stability, there was a huge inflation in 2015 and the recent government is focused on macro stability. The, so the, you can see that the, the trend is decreasing, but there was a recent up, 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 uh, upswing in the, in the recent, recent months. So the, the connectivity story that I wanna tell is our, if you look at the GMS region and Myanmar performance in terms of road density, is the lowest, is here at the bottom. Also, the electricity for consumption, uh, consumption per capita. We also, oh sorry. So if you can see the red uh, dot, 
You can see that Myanmar uh, electricity consumption per capita is also the lowest in the country and in, in the region. So infrastructure, the global infrastructure hub from Australia also did a study of developing countries and developed countries, and they did an estimation of stock of infrastructure, and Myanmar has the lowest infrastructure stock in the entire sample. So why, why, why am I talking about the infrastructure? Because we did a study, the R Institute did a study on the role of uh, infrastructure in the sub-national convergence. It's a convergence of economic growth between state and region over the years. We, unite, we used SLI data, NILI data, to see whether there was a convergence of economic growth uh, uh, across time, across space. And what we find is there was, there was convergence uh, across state and region. If, if we drop two regions of state, one is Rakhine, another one is Chin. So some, some state or regions are lagging behind. There's also importance of infrastructure. So road increases both growth and convergence rate, and railroad also improves the convergence rate. So the infrastructure is playing a, a, a big role in bringing state or region together in, in terms of economic growth. We're also finding what's the role of the border trade versus sort of a within and uh, without a sort of a, a external integration versus domestic integration, which one's more important. What we find is domestic integration is more important for, for growth convergence than border trade. So this is what we're looking at. This is a, a, a satellite imagery of a road network versus a, a convergence in terms of night lights. So we're seeing a sort of a correlation between night lights and, 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 and the road density. And this is a graph of a convergence uh, using distance to Mandalay as a as an as a indicator. So the farther away from the Mandalay area, we're hoping that there will be uh, uh, faster growth. Then, then we'll see that if you're closer to Mandalay, then there was, you have lower growth because you have convergence. So we're seeing a complete different patterns in the border trade. If, you're, if, you're, if we have an indicator using distance to uh, border area in China, you will see a complete, completely opposite uh, trend, which is the farther away from China, you, your growth is uh, so will be fast, uh, will, your growth will be uh, 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 higher or lower. So the different pattern. So another area is, is connectivity is, is, is heavily constrained, but we also see a lot of conflict in the region, in the, in the country. There's 20 uh, uh, arms groups uh, currently active, and they're operating in all these areas. So this is, is this constitute 180, 118 township out of 330 township in the country, and the conflict affected area uh, township includes 11.8 million people, which is one, or around 25 percent of the country. This is a picture of the the, the uh, internally displaced person in 2015. So this is saying the endemic conflict, uh, or 60 years of civil war, has displaced. displaced uh, generated massive internal displacement. So this is, in 2015, there's around 700,000 internally displaced persons around the country. So they're all highlighted here. <coughs> in some area, in this area, there's around four, 400,000 internally displaced persons from conflict. So as you know, that, that was before the conflict in the recent outburst of uh, communal violence in Rakhine. So that, I just want to put it in the broader historical perspective, the, the role of conflict in generating uh, massive displacement is very common. So what are our priorities? Peace and power supply or infrastructure must be the priority of the country. So the, the, bring it back to the Ars People Center, uh, ASEAN. The, who are the people that we're trying to center? The ASEAN must be center of some people, right? But who are the people? What, who represent, who get to represent the people? Is it uh, the academics? Is this sort of, sort of a, a more uh, intellectual? Who, who gets to represent the people? So the, this is a point to the, 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 the speaker from uh, Malaysia. The, the need for consultation at the grassroots level is how, how, how far do we go down in the grassroots level? And who gets to represent the people? There's a definition of issues. Second is, what are the 
the, the boundaries? Is this sort of a, are we focusing on issues that are more trans transboundary issues as a resource management uh, that cross borders issues? Or are we focusing how, to what level of locality or local issues do we go down to? And are we, because our, one of our speakers always talk about human rights, are we talking about more civic regionalism, uh, talking about rights, right based right-based regionalism, and then if we're defending or protecting rights, and then whose right and which right are we defending, and through which mechanism. These are the issues that need to be addressed. And what are the concrete conditions for civic regionalism or participatory regionalism? Uh, so peace and security is, is, is paramount in securing regional, uh, regionalism, but how do we ensure, uh, what are the mechanisms that we should put in place to make sure peace and stability in the particular area. So my last point, my last point is our priorities are the Myanmar government is now drafting Myanmar Sustainable Development Action Plan, which is trying to situate our policy action in the SDG targets and framework, and also a regional framework, including the ASEAN Economic Community Framework and Gen uh, Greater Mekong Initiative Framework. So these are the sort of a, a, a national level initiative that are trying to link up to the global and the regional level uh, uh, framework. So in, in sort of discussing and domestic level integration, domestic level economic growth, maybe the regional framework can be useful as a reference point to, uh, to, to, to uh, deepen our, our initiative research, uh, uh, research or reform uh, initiative. My last point is, is, going back to the first, first section on populism, which is how do we differentiate between people-centered ASEAN and populism uh, ASEAN? Pop, uh, ASEAN that is driven by populism. So people are also, if the agenda of the ASEAN, people-centered ASEAN, how can we make sure that it's not gonna be driven by, by populist uh, agenda? So these are the issues, this is the question that we need to consider when moving forward with the people-centered ASEAN agenda. Thank you.